What is up, 5th grade? Mr. G here with another episode of Mr. G's Math Videos. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at types of numbers called prime and composite. We're going to be looking at some definitions of what makes a number prime and composite, and then how do we even tell if a number is prime or composite. So let's go ahead and jump right in to our definitions. So what is a prime number? A prime number is any number that can only be divided by one and itself. Okay, the only way we can make it is one times itself or one and itself is divisible by it. So some examples of prime numbers, three, seven, 11. The reason why these numbers are considered prime is there's only one way to make it. The number three, one times three. That's it. There's no other way to make three. Seven, the only way to make seven is one times seven. Okay. So if there's only one way to make a number, we consider that a prime number. What is a composite number? A composite number is a number that can be divided by more than just one and itself. There's actually multiple ways to make a certain number. So some examples of composite numbers are four, eight, and 21. Four is a composite number because I can make four one times four and two times two. Since there's more than one way to make it, we consider it a composite number. 21 is a composite number because there's multiple ways to make it. One times 21, that's one way. And then three times seven is a second way. Since there's at least two ways to make 21, we consider that a composite number. Now that we know the difference between prime and composite, let's go ahead and take a look at some rules to help us determine if a number is prime and composite a little bit quicker. So our first rule, all even numbers are composite except for number two. The reason why all even numbers are composite is because all even numbers can be divided by two. So that automatically makes every single even number you can multiply it two times something and it'll give you that number, okay? The only rule breaker for this is the number two. And the reason is only way to make number, the only way to make two is one times two. There's not a second way. So the number two is prime, but that is the only even number that we consider prime. A second rule that'll help you determine whether it's prime or composite. All numbers that end in five or zero are composite, except for the number five. That's a rule breaker. The reason all numbers that end in five or zero are composite is because they can all be divided by five, except for the number five. There's only one way to make five. It's one times five. So two and five, those are our rule breakers. They are considered prime. That means all of our prime numbers must have to end in one, three, seven, or nine. Now, we need to talk about this. That does not mean all prime numbers end in one, three, seven, or nine. We just saw an example earlier, the number 21, that ends in a number one, but that wasn't a prime number. It was composite because there were two ways to make it. So don't get those two concepts confused not all prime numbers end in 1, 3, 7, or 9, but all prime numbers will end in 1, 3, 7, or 9. So it's very similar, just a very slight difference in the meaning of that, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples, and I'll show you how to figure out whether it's prime or composite. So let's take a look at our number 249 it ends in the number nine. Now remember what we said, all prime numbers, they have to end in one, three, seven, or nine, but we just have to test it now to see, is this truly prime or is there another way to make this number and we consider it composite? So to do this, we have to think, what are the factors of nine? How do we make nine? Well, the factors are one times nine and three times three. So one, three, and nine are our factors. 
I don't need to worry about the number one because I already know 249 is divisible by one. So I'm going to go ahead and test three and nine. I'm going to go ahead and test three first. So in order for us to test it, we're just going to do division. Here's my division bracket. There's my hashtag. And I'm going to go ahead and start to divide. So my first question is, how many groups of three go into two? Zero. How many groups of three go into 24? Well, I see 24. It's in the eighth position. Eight groups of three go into 24. I multiply it. I subtract it. And I get zero. Then I'm going to drop down and bring down my nine. And then I repeat the process. How many groups of three go into nine? Well, I see nine on my hashtag. Three groups of three go into nine. We multiply it. It's nine. We subtract it. And I have a remainder of zero. That tells me 249 is divisible by three. Three times 83 makes 249. So I have two ways to make 249. One times itself. And now I just figured out three times 83 also makes 249. Since there's two ways to make it, it's a composite number. Let's take a look at one more example. 73. I think to myself, what are the factors that make three? One and three. Those are the only two ways to make it. I don't need to worry about the one because I already know 73 is divisible by one. So I just have to test the three. Set up my division problem. There's my hashtag. And the first question I ask, how many groups of three go into seven? Two groups of three go into seven. That's as close as I can get. So I put my two in the quotient. Two times three is six. I'm going to subtract it. That leaves me with one. My next step is I bring down my next place value. So now I have 13. How many groups of three go into 13? Well, the closest I can get is 12. That is four groups of three. I multiply it, 12. I subtract it, and I find out I have a remainder of one. 24 remainder of one. That means three does not evenly go into 73. Therefore, three is not a factor of 73 and because three is not a factor that means the only way to make 73 is one times 73 and if you remember from our definition about prime numbers there's only one way to make it it's considered prime okay so that's how we tell whether a number is prime or composite we have to test it all right it is now your turn how do you know if these are prime or composite? So go ahead and pause the video and then test 75. All right, you've unpaused it. We've tested 75. It's a composite number. Remember what we said earlier, our rules, all numbers ending in 5, we consider composite because they can be divisible by 5. 75 can be divided by 5 evenly. All right, let's look at our second example. 43. I want you to pause the video again. See if you can figure out if 43 is prime or composite. All right, let's see how you did. So 43, I have to test it because it's not an even number. It doesn't end in five or zero. So I have to think to myself, what are the factors of three? Well, the only way to make it is one and three. So I'm going to test the number three with division. There's my bracket. I know three goes into four one time. That gives me three. So I'm going to subtract it. I get one, and now I'm going to bring down the next place value, 13. How many groups of three go into 13? Four groups of three, which makes 12. I'm going to subtract it. That leaves me with a remainder of one. If I have a remainder of one and it does not go in evenly, I know it has to be a prime number. Three does not go evenly into 43, and the only way to make 43 is one times itself. 
therefore it's prime. All right, your last challenge. The number 142. Pause this video, see if you can determine it's, if, if it's prime or composite, and then could you explain how you know? All right, you've unpaused, 142. Let's see how you did. It is composite. Remember, 142 is an even number, and we said all even numbers are composite, except our rule breaker, the number two. So 75 is composite, 43 is prime, 142 is composite. All right, guys, that is going to be it. That is how you tell the difference between a prime number and a composite number. I appreciate everybody who watched this video. Thank you so much for spending your time with me to learn about prime and composite. Don't forget, hit that like and subscribe button. That way you get notifications anytime I upload a new teaching video over the concepts we are learning in fifth grade. That's going to do it for me, guys. Until next time, Manta Rays, keep on mathing.